Hello and thanks for joining us again at Nomad PDU. Today we're going to talk specifically about charging the Nomad PDU from AC-DC right through to DC-DC and understanding the unit a little bit better. We do get lots and lots of questions from people who do have Nomads existingly, maybe after 12 months, or they're borrowing it to people and not giving instructions. The most important thing that I can stress, and we do this continually in our tutorials, is the instructions. Uh, every day we get three or four emails from customers asking specific questions and they are actually in the, in the instructions and we're going to cover that off, including how to charge from a vehicle, what you should and shouldn't do, and talking about the relationship of an alternator and a nomad, which we're going to cover uh, in this tutorial. So basically AC-DC, it comes with an 8 amp AC-DC charger. The AC-DC charger at 8 amp will not consistently charge at 8 amp. As the nomad gets full, it's going to take on less uh, charge from the actual charger. On the charger itself, you'll see the little green light, and this is actually plugged in. The green light means it's getting power into the, I guess you can call this a little regulator, but it's the charger. So when you plug it into your Nomad, you plug it into the red Anderson area, which is here, and the red circle area, this is a regulated input. So what that means is, the power that you put into the Nomad, you have to ask, is it regulated or is it not regulated? We do have a regulator here because it's a charger, it's putting an 8 amp nice and solid and then it goes into your regulated input. So that is now showing on the charger, it's red. It's actually charging. Now the reason I'm using this one specifically here is because I want to talk about the importance of um, diagnostic tools like this. This is a power analyzer and it's something that's really, really good to have. It's handy. It also lets you understand all about your off-grid, understand if you're free camping, it lets you know how much current's coming from the sun, from a solar panel, or from any other source. It also helps you not to damage the unit and better understand how to use this. So, I'll get an email from somebody saying, my unit will not fully charge, and it used to charge to 12.4 to 12.7, but now it's only charging to 12.1 or 11.7 and so on. Now, it could be one of two things. It could be the Nomad, but 99.9% of the time it's not going to be, and we haven't seen one do that. So, what it's more likely going to be is going to be the charger. So without a diagnostic tool, I would say, okay, when you're charging light now, it's got a red light on it saying it's taking charge. If the light goes green on the charger and the Nomad's saying, say, 12.1, then I know if this is going green, green means not charging, okay? As opposed to people think that it's charging when it's green. It's not. When this little red light on the charger is red, it's charging. The same as you've got a charge light here. If this charge light goes off, and it's say 12.1 or 11.7, and this is green, then you pretty much know that this is a faulty charger. So that's a test you can do before sending this email and say, hey Wayne, I've run the Nomad, I've taken all the loads off, I've just run the Nomad on my charger, and it's been charging with the little red light on, and suddenly it's gone green, but it's only showing 11.8 or 9 volt. Pretty much it's going to be the charger. Now if you've got a diagnostic tool like this, I pretty much can tell straight away if there's an issue with this charger. Now I know there is, which is why I've used it. So I'm going to use this here, I'm going to plug into source, and what that will do is it will tell me how much voltage is coming out of this charger, and it's telling me that it's getting 12.2, 12 12 and if you talk about discrepancy on the LED screen, it can be a one point difference, and that's fine. So it might say 12.2, 12.1, now I know that this is faulty, so that charger needs to be replaced, but you can still use it, you're just going to realise that it's only going to get the unit, to 12.2. You can't get any more because that's the maximum you can charge to. How else can you test that it's, it's the, not the unit? You can actually plug in a, say, a DC-DC, we're going to cover shortly, or you can plug your solar panel into the unit and see if it gets the full charge. And if it does, pretty much you've eliminated the fact that it's this, it's more than likely the charger. So that's an 8 amp, as it gets close to full, it might only put in a half an amp, okay? And we're going to talk about the reason that's important to understand in a moment. So diagnostic tools, these are only about 50 bucks. Talk to our partners where you get your Nomad, most of them will have these. So that one there is a faulty charger. And if I grab a good charger here, this one is perfectly fine. And I know when I plug this in to source, like so, it's showing me on this 12.62, 12.64 is the voltage coming out of here. So I know that this charge is fine. Now, what else could happen? Say if the, the unit was not charging fully, but this is fully showing 12.6 voltage coming out. The other thing that it can be is it could be a calibration of an LED screen. It does not mean that the unit has an issue at the battery level or the VMS level. So the other thing you can use with this diagnostic tool is you can say, okay, let's plug into the output, the source. So it's going to say what's the current coming from. 
And then I know this is 11.5 on here, and on the screen, it's coming up, it's gonna show me 11.4, 11.5. So I know that what's coming out here is replicated on the screen. What you can find, and it's very rare, <clears throat> is that if you plug this in here, and this was to say 12.6 on the actual uh, analyzer, if this was saying 12.6 at the analyzer here, at the output, and that was 11.5, then I know, I know that that voltage middle monitor, the LED screen is not calibrated and that needs to be replaced. Very rare, we've only seen a couple in you know, a 2,000 or 3,000 units out there. So there's some basic reasons that the Analyze is such a good tool to have. So you can actually look at, okay, what's the issue with the whole setup? Okay, is it my charger? Can I test it? Yes, I can, use a power analyzer. Is the charger showing red on the charger? And when it goes green on the charger, which means not charging, what is the voltage showing on the Nomad? Okay, if it's saying 12.1 or 11.8 and this stops charging, you know it's going to the charger. If you've got an analyzer, plug into the output, the source, and it will tell you how much voltage is actually at the outputs. If that's different than the uh, voltage screen and it's out by, you know, 0.45 or a, you know, a couple of points, then you pretty much know it's just a voltage screen that needs to be replaced. The actual battery itself and the BMS, so the battery management software, etc., is all fine. It's just a, a, a dumb screen that's got an issue. We're just going to replace it. So that's basically charging AC/DC. So what else you can use your AC-DC charger for is if you want to charge it from your vehicle, the AC-DC charger could be plugged into an inverter like this. This is a 150 watt inverter. The AC-DC charger will draw 109 watts when it's uh, pulling as hard as it can and putting out 8 amp. You can plug the 150 watt into the car and then you can plug your AC-DC charger into this. And then you're gonna have an 8 amp charger, an AC-DC charger. This is a uh, modified wave as opposed to pure sign. Again, you can get these from our partners. They have a lot of uses as well as putting into your uh, SIGA sockets here and charging things like your 12 volt um, uh, batteries, your cordless drills and things like that. But analytical tools and diagnostic tools like this, that means you don't need a multimeter. If you're not an electrician, that's fine. All you need to know is what do I plug in where. You can't hurt the Nomad by using this. So now we've talked about AC, DC charging, but the most common ways you're gonna charge a Nomad is going to be from the off-gridding, so it can be from solar, and also when you're driving in your vehicle. I do want to talk about vehicle charging because it's extremely important. And the Nomad will cover off about 95% of any application in a four-wheel drive environment. Um, even if you can look at the many variations out there, there are reasons that we don't have inverters built into these units, and there are reasons that we, we, we would never put them in here, because inverters inherently will fail. And the fact is that uh, people will always plug bigger um, draw uh, accessories into them, destroy the inverters, and you've got a unit that doesn't work. So we'd never put them in there because it's a risk. So we won't put inverters into these. The other thing is you might have is you might have an induction oven or one in a coffee machine. You can't put a thousand watt inverter into one of these because the maximum output at any given time of the unit is 20 amp. And that's you can do that at one go from the Anderson. That's a maximum 20 amp output. So no, you can't plug a thousand watt inverter into it. The maximum that I'd plug in was probably 300 watt inverter. Okay, you can plug a bigger one in, but you have to remember you can't draw any more than 20 amp at any given time from these. Now Charging the Nomad, it's very important to understand regulated and unregulated. So when you've got an AC-DC charger, you plug this into the regulated input. This is also where you're gonna plug your solar panel into if your solar panel is regulated. A regulated solar panel means the power coming from your solar panel has a regulator already on the solar panel. A regulator will typically look like something like this on the back. This is an MPPT controller, but it might be a PWM or something like that, and it might be on the back, little flashy lights. Now that's a controller. That's regulating the power from the PV before it hits the Nomad. Now that will connect into the Red Anderson, and away you go. Now, the other thing you can do with the Nomad is charge it by unregulated. But the regulator is a maximum, maximum of 25 amp charge rate. So that's the most you can put it into the unit at any time across any of these, from regulated to unregulated but this can take a maximum of 25 amp regulated. Now, if you have a solar panel without a regulator, I personally use a 200 watt solar panel without the regulator because I connect directly to the red and black poles here and what I've got on my unit is I've actually made an adapter up like this. So from my solar panel with no regulator, I connect it to here and it goes into my MPPT controller inside the unit. Now this is a maximum of 10 amp. So the maximum you can put in there is 10 amp. Now I know uh, I know for a fact that my 200 watt panel will not put more than 10 amp in. I also know that because I could take my power analyzer and I could put it between the solar panel 
and I could put this into my Nomad and I could put this into the solar panel and I can see how much that solar panel is putting in. That's why these are great to have. If you've got two or three, it never hurts to have them plugged in all over the place and then you understand exactly what the solar panel is doing. So I know I can quite happily plug my 200 watt solar panel into this and it will regulate the power, sorry, the charge going to the Nomad and it'll regulate it for our lithium. So it's got a lithium specific MPPT controller internally. So if you've got a regulated solar panel, that means it's got a regulated power coming from the panel. It has its own regulator. It's coming across, this is the source, it's coming across, it goes into your regulated input. If you have got a solar panel, say 200 watt or less, unregulated, connect it straight into the red and black poles, it'll go to the MPPT, and then the MPPT will uh, regulate the charge for uh, lithium. Now, we get a lot of people ask this question. They'll say, can I charge it at the Anderson and also unregulated at the same time? In the instructions, it's very clear, don't do it. But what I will tell you is that theoretically you can, but you must understand the following. And that is that the unit at any given time cannot be charged at any higher rate than 25 amp. So most people think I can put 25 in here and 10 in here and it's fine. Not the case. The BMS is a 25 amp BMS. That means the maximum amount of current can go through is 25 amp. So if I've got a 15 amp charge, and we do have five and 10 amp DC charges, which is great, and you can plug it in here, say 10 amp. Let's use a 10 amp for example. Now, this is a 10 amp SIGA DC that we can use. And if I was to take this and plug it into my regulated, like so, this is not connected, obviously. So that's connected in, that's gonna put in 10 amp. Now the maximum this unit can take at any given time is 25 amp. I'm now putting in 10 amp here, and that's from a regulated source. If I'm gonna use the unregulated here, the maximum I can put into unregulated is 10 amp, regardless of what's connected, maximum 10 amp. So if I plug 10 amp unregulated solar panel into this here, that means what's the most current that's going into this is 20 amp maximum. So 10 amp coming into the MPPT and 10 amp going into here. Okay, what can't you do? What you can't do is say, I'm gonna plug a 20 amp DC-DC into here. So you might get yourself a 20 amp DC-DC charger. We do have 20 amp DC-DC chargers. You put a 20 amp in there, and then you decide you're gonna connect 200 watt panel to the red and black. Okay, there's 10 amp going in here, you've got 20 going here, that's 30. It's not an approximation. The charging amount that you can put in maximum is 25 amp, and that's important to understand because a lot of chargers out there are 25 amp chargers. However, they will charge higher than 25. If you charge higher than 25 amp into the unit, what will happen is the unit will shut itself down and will not take on charge. So what will happen is you'll plug your charger in and say, and we'll get an email say, Wayne, the unit won't charge. And I'll say, how have you been charging it? A lot of you might say they're using a, a, a top-end charger, and I'll say, is it a 25 amp? And they'll say, yes. And I'll say, most cases, the 25s will go to 26 and a half, 27. And they've been instructed saying that this should be fine. It's not fine. It's a rating for a rating. The maximum it can take is 25, and what will happen is it'll shut down and it won't take a charge. You can reset it, and all you need to do is take the charge off it, draw more than one amp, from the unit and then that will reset it and it'll take a charge. So sometimes what we've seen is when they've got a 25 amp DC DC charger on the unit and they've got the fridge plugged in, but it's charging at 27 amp, what happens this little red light keeps going on and off and then what it is, it's resetting because the fridge is drawing four or five amp. So once it goes, it keeps on resetting, resetting, resetting. Eventually the unit's going to fail because again, it can only handle its limitations for a certain period of time. If you keep exceeding, exceeding, exceeding it, all the safety mechanisms inside are not going to be able to protect it. So the idea is you need to follow the instructions, which is so important, um, and also about the charging. It does say in here, it does stipulate in three times in the, in the um, instructions, never charge these units directly from your alternator or directly from a SIGA socket. The reason being is it's unregulated. I know technically speaking, an electrician will say, well, it is regulated. But if you connect these directly to an alternator without a fuse, and that's the worst case scenario, but even if you've got a fuse, uh, most people will put a 40 or 50 amp fuse in there. What is the maximum you can charge the Nomad at through the regulated input? It's 25 amp. The old node is capable of putting 50 amp out, even more than that. So what's gonna happen is you will kill this unit. Um, and the, that's the reason that you must use a DC-DC charger. So this is a DC-DC charger here, and that's a SIGA DC. So that's plugging into the SIGA socket. This one's a 10 amp, and that means this can go into a 20 amp rated SIGA socket in the car, and it'll regulate at 10 amp. That's regulated, now it goes into my regulated input. Um, you can get a, uh, a five amp one, which is great for any SIGA socket. Looks exactly the same as this. Plug it in, 
Plug in Nomad, beautiful, put your 5 amp in the way you go. Now if you wanted to plug your solar panel in, you just have to remember, okay, maximum 10 here can go in, and if you're doing that, you've only got 15 left. Okay, so let's go over that again. A maximum of 25 amp at any given time can go into the Nomad. Now you can split it up, a maximum of 10 here, and a maximum of 15 here, but it cannot exceed it by even a half an amp, because you will trip the unit out, it needs to be reset by drawing more than an amp out of it. So the Sega DCs have been very, very popular, and it covers most scenarios where you want to have a dual, but you want to connect the flexibility. So you've got your AC DC charging, and then you've got your solar panel charging as well. Unregulated solar panel does not have a regulator. You can connect it to the red and black poles, and then the regulator internally of the Nomad will charge it at 10 amp, specifically for lithium. And that's what I go because it's a better quality MPPT inside. Now, if you've got a regulator on the panel and the regulator only has lead acid, AGM and gel, what I would do is put on a gel setting and then you can plug into the regulator. Uh, a lot of the pa our panels nowadays will have a lithium profile, just switch on the lithium and plug it into the regulated input if the solar panel has a regulator. So today, now we've just spoken about the AC-DC charger and diagnosing whether it could possibly be the unit or the charger if the, char if the unit is not fully charging. So understanding that this, the charges can fail, you know, you will get some that last four or five years, but you might get something that's, that's faulty. But again, if it's only charged at 12.2 on the charger, you can still use the charger. It just means that this unit's not gonna get fully charged off the AC-DC, but if you're charging by a solar panel, no problem. If you're charging by DC and you've got a DC, that's the simplest way to find out whether there's a fault with the charger is plug your DC into them. These have been highly successful. We had no fails on these. As you plug this in and it fully charges, you know that it's the AC-DC charger. Um, and a lot of people leave the AC-DC charger in 24 seven sometimes, and that's not really a good idea to do. They'll get hot, they'll get cold, they'll get hot, they'll get cold, they will fail. They're just a, a, a dumb electrical device. So that's charging the Nomad from AC-DC and then your basic DC-DC understanding of vehicle. But again, I need to touch on is, under no circumstance, do you plug a Nomad directly to an alternator? It stipulates it in the instructions three times, and the instructions on the Nomad website, nomadpedia.com.au, you can have a look at the full instructions for the V5. It's very, very specific what you can and can't do. And again, the maximum charge of the unit at any given time is 25 amp. You can split it between the solar and the regulator here. And one of the simplest things you can do is you can get yourself a DC-DC charger that has a solar input, and then you can basically plug it into the regulator input here, and it takes solar and does all the smart stuff outside and then you don't have to worry about the unit. So there's a couple of those units out there that you can look at. Um, and if you want to know more about those, you can send us an email at contact at nomadpdu.com.au. Um, so that is basic charging of the Nomad and diagnosing some faults. So I know that we haven't covered everything off and we're doing another tutorial after this one, which is more, I guess, advanced charging of the Nomad. And again, we'll cover off some basic with diagnostic again, um, how to look at what currents are coming in um, and how to use multiple Nomads in an off-gridding situation. So if you want to do multiple charges and things like that. So again, full instructions, nomadpdu.com to you. Um, if you've got any queries at all, I'd rather you send us an email at contact at nomadpdu.com to and let us know what you're trying to do and achieve. And then we'd rather you ask the questions so we can make sure that you don't destroy the unit. And again, if you don't read the instructions and you destroy the unit, a lot of the things are going to avoid your warranty. So follow the instructions, you won't have a problem. If you make your own things up and Chinese whispers is one of our biggest problems at the moment, is people are borrowing a Nomad to someone else that has never used one, and that person's assuming when they're out camping because they're taking advice from another person who doesn't have a Nomad, and they're saying it should be able to do this and that and the other, and you're gonna have a problem. And it happens not often, but we do get calls when you're out in the bush, and that's not a place you wanna be messing around with the unit and having to try and figure out how to reset it. You can reset the units if you do a dead short, um, and there's a tutorial on that as well if you just uh, go to, um, our website or even just go to YouTube and talk about dead short uh, recovery on a Nomad, you'll be able to see it there. So we'll uh, c cover this off again in the more advanced charging of the Nomad PDU. So again, we'll talk again soon. Thanks.